Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2015 Toyota Sienna, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the eTrailer.com Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver. Out of all the hitches available for the Sienna van, to be honest with you, this one's probably my favorite. And that's really for a few different reasons. The way it's going to look, the clearance that it's going to give us, and just the overall versatility of it. So let's talk about that appearance a little bit. For the most part, it's going to be completely hidden. Really the only thing you're going to be able to see is a receiver tube opening here. So that's really going to help maintain that clean factory look. It's also going to have a matte black carbide finish. Now this is really tough. It doesn't get scratched up very easily. So if you live on gravel roads or something like that, you're not gonna have to worry about over time this getting banged up and rusting out. Now, as far as the clearance goes, not only is it gonna give us better ground clearance because the hitch is gonna set up tighter to the bottom of our van, it's also going to give us really good bumper clearance. And what I mean by that bumper clearance is the end of the receiver tube opening is going to be just behind the very edge of our bumper. A lot of our Sienna customers like to use many different types of folding accessories, and that's where that bumper clearance really comes into play. Since it sits where it does, you shouldn't have any issues at all whenever we want to fold that accessory in that upright stored position. We're not gonna have to worry about it hitting our bumper. So since this is a class three hitch, it's gonna give us that two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. That's a super common size and a ton of different types of accessories will work perfectly with it. It's going to have a reinforced collar for extra strength and I think it helps add to the look of it too. It kind of gives it a nice complete finished look. It's going to use the standard 5 8 pen. Now a pen and clip does not come included, but if you need one you can pick it up here at eTrailer. You have really thick safety chain openings which to me would give me a little extra peace of mind knowing I have a really solid connection point if anything were to happen. And they're gonna give us plenty of room to use just about any size hook that we might have. The hitch is also gonna give us some pretty impressive weight capacities too. As far as the maximum gross tongue weight rating goes, it's gonna be 525 pounds. And so that's gonna be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch. So that's a pretty high number and you shouldn't have any issues at all using whatever bike rack or cargo carrier that you might want to, for example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, it's gonna be 3,500 pounds. That's gonna be the amount of weight that's pulling on the hitch. So that is the weight of your trailer, plus anything that you might have on it. Now, I do wanna mention, it's never a bad idea to check with your Sienna's owner's manual to make sure your Toyota can pull that much weight safely. And if you do plan on doing some towing, I would recommend picking up some trailer wiring, that way the lights on your trailer will match up with the lights on your van and you'll be safe and legal. Now I'm going to give you a couple of measurements and you're going to use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's going to be about 13 inches. So if you do plan on doing some towing, chances are pretty good you're going to need to get a ball mount with a rise. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, it's going to be about four inches and you're going to use that measurement to help figure out that if any folding accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without contacting the bumper. So whether you plan on towing a utility trailer, maybe even a small boat or pop-up camper, or primarily need a hitch for those accessories like bike racks and cargo carriers, this is going to be able to handle just about anything you want to throw at it. Now as far as the installation goes, it's really not too bad, even though the hitch is pretty much completely hidden. I'll show you a trick along the way that'll make the install go a lot easier and save you a whole lot of time. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our install, we're going to be underneath the back of our Sienna. And first thing we're going to need to do is remove this underbody panel. So this is going to be held in place by a few different types of fasteners. The ones that we're going to work on first will be these white push pin style fasteners. So the way to get these removed is you can take a flathead screwdriver, you to kind of pry underneath the head of it and simply just pull it out. So I'm gonna use that same technique 
to get the rest of them out. If just a head pops out, it's not a big deal. You can always just come back and pull the base out as well. So now we can move to the back edge of our bumper here. And we're gonna have a total of five 10 millimeter screws that we can pull out. Next, we're gonna have a total of four of these plastic Phillips head fasteners. So to get these, take a large screwdriver and simply turn them to the left and loose them up. These don't actually come all the way out. They'll just kind of break free, as you can see there. And the same thing for all of them. Now sometimes too, if they're not wanting to break free, you can put a little downward pressure on the panel as you're rotating it. And something to keep in mind, these are the last fasteners holding this up. So definitely kind of want to keep a hold of it. That way it doesn't fall on you. Once we have the panel down, we'll just set it off to the side. So now over here on the passenger side, what we're going to do is lower our exhaust a little bit to give us some extra room to work. Pretty simple. We just have this one rubber hanger here. If you spray it down with soapy water or some penetrating oil, it helps to get it off. But I'm just gonna take a pry bar and pry one end of that rubber portion off of the metal hanger. If we move over to our frame rail, we're gonna have three stickers and a plug that we need to remove. So the plug, just take a screwdriver and pop that out. And pretty much the same thing with the stickers. Just kind of get underneath them and pull them off. And once I have these all removed over here, I'm just going to repeat that same process on the other side. Now these stickers are actually covering up some factory weld nuts that we're going to use as our attachment points. Now, even though our weld nuts were covered with stickers, not a bad idea to clean out the threads. I'm just gonna use a two brush, kind of get any potential dirt or debris out of there. And while we're here, I'm gonna go over the hardware that's going to secure our hitch into place. It's all gonna be the same. We're just gonna use a bolt and a conical tooth washer. You're gonna to want to put the washer on the bolt to where the teeth are gonna face up towards the hitch. So once we have our hitch up, we're simply just going to thread that hardware into all the holes. Now I wanna mention the other side is set up the exact same way. So anything we do over here, we're also going to repeat over there. Now at this point, we are going to deviate away from the instructions a little bit. And that's because in my past experience, I found a much easier way to actually get the hitch on. It saves a lot of time and headache. The instructions will tell you to remove your bumper or your fascia completely. But I found that if we come to these tabs here and bend them flat, that'll give us a, more than enough room to get our hitch up where it needs to go. So what I like to do is kind of hold the top of the tab here with my finger and simply just bend them down until they're pretty much flush. So about like that. And I'll do the same thing over here for this one. Now with an extra set of hands, we can take our hitch and slide it into position. So you want to go up and over the tailpipe there. You're going to kind of make sure it don't get hung up on those tabs that we bent down and kind of just pop those plastic tabs kind of over the top of the hitch and we're able to get it up where it needs to be. We're going to take our hardware. We want to get at least one started hand tight. That way the hitch will support itself while we work on the rest of the bolts. So 
Now that we have it supporting itself, we'll get the rest of the hardware started here. And once I have it all in two position, we can come back and snug it all down. If you're having trouble kind of getting one of the bolts lined up, sometimes it helps to kind of loosen up that hardware a little bit. That way you can kind of maneuver and shift the hitch to get everything lined up. That being said, I'll take three quarter inch socket and snug everything down. Now we can grab a torque wrench and tighten all of our hardware down to the amount specified in our instructions. Now that we have our hitch up, we can re-hang our exhaust. So we spray it down again, makes it a little easier, and this time we can just do it by hand. So kind of push the hanger back and the tailpipe up. At this point, we can move back to our tabs and just bend them back up into position. And then we can grab our underbody panel and work on getting it trimmed. So here's our underbody panel, and I went ahead and marked it out according to the diagram and the instructions. It's not a bad idea either, once you have it marked out, just to kind of roughly hold it in place underneath the van and make sure it all kind of lines up good. So I did that, everything looks pretty close. This is pretty thin plastic, so I'm just gonna use a pair of shears to trim it out. You could also use a Dremel tool maybe a sharp utility knife or something like that. With our panel trimmed up, we can now reinstall it the opposite way that we removed it. That'll finish up our look at and our installation of the eTrailer.com Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2015 Toyota Sienna.